Is this live? I don't know what's going down. So it looks like I've just started out. I thought it was live on OBS. I'm still, I'm new to streaming, yo. Um, so I did like a minute, you know, introduction. I'm, I'm going to do it again right quick. So welcome to the pre-show for the Mystic and Sphere broadcast on CKCUFM, January 21st. So we're, we're just sitting on the last hour of January 20th, 2020, uh, you know, and <laughs> at midnight, I'm going to pop off on CKCUFM.com. So check out the, the link in the description. It's going to take you to CKCUFM.com. And there, you can press listen at midnight and you can listen to my radio show, I hope. Or I would like you to, rather. If you like movies, you're going to like this show. So, two-hour show, mostly interviews. Three interviews. One, two, and three. All three of them are dope. Um, <laughs> we got Steven Kazdansky, who made a really funny movie, pretty popular movie too, called Psycho Gorman. Uh, and then we've got, uh, Caroline Williams and Eric Bloomquist, the t uh, two creative minds behind a movie called Ten Minutes to Midnight, which is great. I love that it's a horror movie set in a radio station, which is, you know, fine by me. Um, and then, uh, I jump in with another CKCU host, Mr. Dave Meehan. Uh, who does a show on Tuesday nights, alternating midnight to 2 a.m., like my show kind of is. And um, it's called Just Your Average Radio Show. And we do a deep dive into Star Wars contents, uh, the announced shows. See, this freaking thing, screwing around with the lights, this thing, like, dies immediately. It's a little frustrating. But <laughs> anyways, and then I got some tracks. I'm going to tell you, break down the tracks for you. Uh, I got, um, well, first of all, my theme song is, uh, from the movie Cannibal Ferox, you might be wondering, uh, if you listened to the show before, it's from the movie Cannibal Ferox, NYC main title, uh, sort of disco-y, and then I got another 70s track, uh, the Blackula theme, which is a funny movie, it's got a, a great opening scene, you know, a lot of exploitation movies are, are, they're not in over consistency, for scene to scene, but Blackula has an amazing opening. A guy tries to uh, go to Dracula to get Dracula to end the slave trade. Turns out Dracula is a racist. And then, you know, a couple a hundred years later or so, um, Blackula returns and he 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 wreaks re havoc on the streets of Los Angeles in the nineteen seventies. Then I've got a track from the movie Gwendolyn, which I also review. Gwendolyn's a really sexy movie, a little trippy, a little sexy Indiana Jones riff, in my opinion. And uh, you get the Blu-ray from Severin Films. And I actually review the six Blu-rays that I got from Severin Films on the Black Friday sale. So this is a good transition. So I got a lot of bunch, a bunch of stuff from Black from uh, Severin Films and Vinegar Syndrome. Um, and I'm going to review those releases. Um... Uh, in three broadcasts, basically. So, seven films, Blu-ray, this this time, then the Vinegar Cinder Blu-rays, and then the DVDs I got for uh, both the sales on, uh, um, in, on the last broadcast of February. So, that's what's up. Uh, speaking of seven, I heard they're going to put out um, The New Gladiators by Lucio Fulci, and I've got the theme song to that track um, by Riz Ortolani, which is a banger. Oh my God, it's a banger. And then I got a couple songs to, uh, you know, that are sci-fi uh, oriented for the Star Wars conversation. I got a song from called Spock's Cabin from Star Trek Three: The Search, Search for Spock. <laughs> Excuse me. And then Zerg Theme 1, a song I'm very passionate about. It's a very cool soundtrack from uh, the StarCraft soundtrack. So I do, I do dive into video game soundtracks as well. And this broadcast is called Shocking Dark. It's a bit of a nerdy reference to a movie by a guy named Bruno Mattei. And Shocking Dark is a very funny movie. It is a uh, combination ripoff of uh, Alien and The Terminator. So that's fun stuff. So yeah, Caroline Williams is cool. I didn't realize um, 
she'd been in a lot of stuff back in the day, including the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which got me very excited. I love that movie. And I also review uh, My Little Sister, which is the Swiss entry for Best, Best International Film of the Oscars. I was able to see. And you can uh, stream on a, a, a platform called Film Movement Plus. Um, it takes place actually in Switzerland and uh, Germany. And I'm pretty sure they speak German the entire time. I don't know. <laughs> and then also from Europe, I review a movie called Saint Maud, which is. <laughs> I was just thinking about this correlation. It's produced by the BFI and distributed by A24. And there's another movie that was produced by the BFI and put up by A24 that's a horror movie as well called In Fabric. And I realized. <laughs> I realized when I wrote my review for Saint Maud that Saint Maud is really a carry riff, and in Fabric is really a Dario Argento riff. It's kind of wonderful. And uh, for the record, in Fabric, in my in my opinion, is the better movie. Anyways, that's kind of what's going on for this broadcast. Lots of fun things. Um, you know, one thing I'll say is that. <laughs> In September and August, or August, September, whatever, um, I picked up a lot of in- interviews. And then I was sitting on a bunch, and, you know, I, was, I would drip them out, but then I would also uh, pick stuff up along the way. But I was sitting on a lot of interviews. And then it's Christmas time, Every is busy, and, uh, you know, no more interviews. <laughs> I ran out of stuff. So, <sighs> what, what, what can you do? Um... I was doing two apiece for three broadcasts. Was it for three broadcasts? Um, no, sorry, it was for the last two broadcasts. It was two apiece, which is a little low. I was averaging at four, and this one's got three. Um, and I will tell you, I do have other interviews that are uh, that are recorded and are being booked as we speak. Um, so don't don't worry. Lots of content to come, but this one is like. The dopest one since the 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 last one or the first one of December. Yeah, um, I mean it's great to have long interviews on like one topic, and I've been be, doing my Star Wars and everything in this lately, so I was excited to talk about it for so long with somebody. And then Stephen Costanzi is a great booking, and so is Caroline Williams with with her uh, director right now. It's a really good broadcast. Um, I'm really excited about this one. It's the first time I've been, you know, I'm excited for all of them, but, like, I was really, really amped for this one. Uh, like it was the, uh, sorry, I turned on the light there. Um, the first one in December. And also, I'm going to give you a little tease. Um, I am working on getting a Sundance interview. I've never done an interview through Sundance. I've done... Movies that played Sundance, you know, later on, whatever. But this is my first one do, uh, through the festival, you know. Just a one-off. I'm not going to be there. I'm, I don't have a press pass. It's the same thing would happen for me at Venice, at Cannes, uh, Tribeca. You know, I'm not... I don't get official accreditation, but I sink one in. Same with TIFF last year, too. I didn't get an accreditation for TIFF. Uh, but that is another story. Um, so, I'm just looking through what else I could mention before I sign off because, you know, I don't know. Last time I went for half an hour. I don't think I would be doing that tonight. Maybe next time. We'll see. So, I mean, they kind of covered all that. I mean, the seven movies are really good. I'll break that down right now. I got Turkey Shoot by Brian Trenchard Smith. Hilarious movie from Australia. Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. <laughs> I really enjoyed comparing that movie to Burial Ground. If you're a fan of Burial Ground, uh, you, you're going to want to hear that. Burial Ground is peak cinema, by the way, and you should be a fan of it. And then Gwendolyn was a huge surprise for me. I love that movie. It's really, um, I'm not going to say it's one of my favorite movies of all time, but I've really been digging it lately. Uh, the Killer Crocodile movies are great. And what's great about Killer Crocodile 1 and 2 is you don't have to buy the Blu-ray. You can uh, stream it off Tubi. I streamed out to me so many times. I wanted to hear the behind the scenes story, so I, I caught the Blu-ray, but that's not the story. Then Threads. Threads you can watch, I believe, on Canopy. 
Last I checked. That's, that's how I watched it the first time. So Candy Bean is a cool uh, streaming service um, where you get four free movies, and then that's it. And I think there's some stuff that that uh, don't take your credits as well. You can watch a few more movies if you do it like that. And then, yeah. So, look forward to those Black Friday reviews. And also, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep just kind of reviewing Blu-rays of mine. <laughs> because I want to. Just because I want to. I want to talk about more old movies. I'm happy to talk... I mean... Obviously, the best thing is to talk about new movies that you can go go out and see, get excited for, build the hype. That's the number one reason why I do this. But, um, you know, old movies are great. I love old movies. I prefer old movies, you know, to be honest with you. I would rather get you hyped for new movies, but I prefer old movies. So I, it's just about getting a little balancing act for the future. So... I don't really have much else to say, so uh, until the next time, peace, and listen to the show, midnight to 2am, Mystic and Severe. Take care, guys.